Boju, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page here at Facebook, where I do a daily live stream show. <laughs> I don't really call it a show, and I try to do it every day. Um, there's a few days that I have to take off either because of family or business meetings or something like that. But anyway, I'm here today, and today is Friday. Yay, Friday, November 30th. Yeah. And it is really nice here. We, we, we have cloud cover, that's for sure. It's not sunny, but um, it is mild for this time of year. And I was just going to look to see. It's 32 degrees out. It's balmy <laughs> compared to what we've been going through. And, yeah, I was just outside with George, and uh, I noticed that oh, it's really nice out here. You know, it wasn't that, that really bitey cold. Um, yeah, so it's good. Good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, for those who might not know me, I'm Neshi Lokatz, and um, I'm the steward of uh, Star Nation's organization's um, LLC. And uh, that means that uh, under that umbrella, we have the Star Nation's radio network live stream shows here at Facebook. And we also have um, the Star Nation's magazine and the academy and also the publishing end of Star Nations. We're a multimedia company. Yeah. And, and it's fun. And I get to do fun things like this too, these daily live streams. So um, welcome everybody who's with me. I appreciate you being with me this afternoon. And those who'll be um, watching the recorded uh, video, I appreciate that as well. Um, I know that we all live really busy lives and sometimes We'd like to be in the live stream uh, chat, but sometimes that just can't happen, you know? And so we all love our the recorded shows so that we can uh, listen in and uh, take note, right? Take note. So um, before we get uh, much further down the road, what I'm gonna do is like and share uh, the broadcast live stream. And uh, we do that um, so that we can um, be in the, the news feed much more often, right? We know that that Facebook, I call it an elusive creature, we kind of know what it likes. It likes likes <laughs> and loves. Um, it likes shares and comments. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to like it and I'm going to share. And I'm going to share it to my timeline uh, to let my friends know um, that I'm live streaming. And I do this every day, so I get these really cool quick keys. And... So it doesn't take long. And to please join. There we go. And that's to my my live, my news feed. And then I'm going to share it over to the two closed groups that we have. Um, and that's to the radio network and also the academy. So I'm just going to say, hey, peeps. And let them know I'm live streaming. Okay, got to make sure I punctuate. <laughs> oh my gosh, please join me. There we go. There. And now we just make sure we get it to the right groups here. Done. Done and done. All right, so um, you know that um, previously I was using just regular life uh, Facebook live stream. They call that native live streaming. And the first time I heard that, I thought, Hmm, that's native, native live streaming when I do it. It was a joke, right? Um, but uh, recently I started using our partners at BeLive TV for this live stream as well um, for a couple of reasons. Um, it was one day that uh, the internet wasn't quite working really well. We were just starting, um, I think Mercury Retrograde was gonna start like in, like in a day or two, right? And I was having some, some technical difficulties. I couldn't get the Facebook live stream to work and so i just did a um a be live tv live stream and so i thought it must be time to switch back and uh, start using that vehicle to do these uh, broadcasts with so which means that we get to do some really cool things like this <laughs> hi rob good good to have you in the house this is rob kendall longtime listener to the shows and all things star nations we appreciate that and yes native to the second power absolutely <laughs> absolutely so we can show um comments right 
and show the the um, the chat that is happening in the live stream. This is Julie, Julie Hedges. She says, hello all, how is that George? George is doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. He is, I don't know if you can, let's see, let's move that. I got to move in one direction or another here. Uh, chair's in the way, but he's just, just below the chair there by the back door. Um, he's doing really well, actually. Um, <clears throat> his incision site, which is really, really kind of small, is, um, is looking really good. And um, his temperament is... Uh, a lot better. He was kind of grumpy there for a while too. And, and, you know, working through the uh, the anesthesia and the medication, getting it out of his system. You know, took a. I think we're 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 looking at George this morning and saying, yeah, I think he's he's definitely back to his old self, really. Um, that and he was really having a hard time um, um, trying to be quiet and less active, right? For a four-month-old puppy, that's really a tall order. <laughs> And it was even taller for Paul and I to enforce it. Um, and so that meant that for most of the time when he's up here with me for the shows, you know, we go romping around in the woods for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so before the show. And um, and then he comes up here, he plays a little bit, and then he goes to sleep. Well, not since, not since he had his surgery. I've had to put him out in the car a couple of times because he just... He was barking and, you know, trying to get my attention. Come on and play, come on and play kind of thing. So, but he's doing good. Thank you for asking, Julie. I appreciate it. Um, and we have Cindy Brooks from Evansville, Indiana. Hello, Cindy. Here, Jean. Shush. Okay. Good boy. Um, <clears throat> hello from Evansville. You must be a friend of Julie Hedges, I bet. All right, and Annie, Annie's here. He just says, Mercury must be affecting me here for the last eight years. <laughs> I need to come out of it. Well, that could be too, right? Um, yeah, Mercury retrograde has been kind of very interesting um, this last uh, this last go around here. Um, we, we experienced it yesterday for Connie's show, Spiritual Mysteries of Life. Um, man, we were really working hard and trying to get her... Um, audio to work yesterday morning, right? And I went through my entire repertoire of what happens when you lose sound, when you're using uh, Be Live TV. And uh, I've been doing this for a year and a half now, so I've got, I've, I've got a little experience under my belt, right? So we were done, like the checklist. And I finally said, I finally said to, um, to Connie, I asked her a question. I said, did you recently do an update on your computer? Because I was at, I was out of ideas, you know, and I was at, talking to my spiritual team and saying, you know, help me here. What's, what's going on? How can I, how can I help Con, uh, Connie get her show rolling here? And um, it wasn't, and then they, they reminded me of um, the last time I did an update um, that, uh, I lost Flash on my Mac, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the, the items are run by Flash, Adobe Flash, and so, you know, and sure enough, she had done uh, an update. So she called the guy that helped her do the update, who's a t uh, techie, and he could not find her microphone, her built-in microphone. It was like, it vanished. <laughs> and so... Um, and then, you know, Spirit helped us out, you know, because she called me on her phone to do uh, a FaceTime with me, and or I think it was Messenger. It was Messenger video. And I said, what are you using? And she tells me, I said, that's it. We can use your phone. And it turns out she already had the Be Live TV app on her phone. And all we had to do was test it out, and she was good to go. So, you know, it took, it took some time. It took us probably close to an hour, hour and 20 minutes or so, to get all that kind of figured out. So, and thank you for hanging hanging with us through, throughout that and then coming back in the afternoon um, to, and it was fun to have uh, Connie on the live stream show here with me this, in the afternoon um, and to talk about the things that she was gonna talk about um, on her show, but also to incorporate the primary card draw, right? I thought it was fun. It was a little, um, we just kind of had to relax into the flow of it and just let spirit take it because um, <laughs> there wasn't much else we could do. 
Oh, Julie, Julie Hedges is saying, hi, Cindy Nix. It's Julie here. Yeah. Hey, one of my sisters, Christine, is here. Hi, Christine. So good that you're with us. Christine has a really beautiful, beautiful cat, Miko. We, we, we're um, aunties to a furry kitten, too, for um, when, when she first got Miko. It was like we couldn't get enough of Miko. Send us more pictures. Miko is a, uh, a Maine Coon cat. And if you've never seen Christine's um, kitty, Miko, you, you have to check it out on some of the pictures that Christine shares on her Facebook page. It, Miko is gorgeous. Love, I love Miko's tail. So long and bushy. Yeah. Hey, Cindy. She's saying hi to Julie right back. <laughs> Rob is saying, may Mercury be more uh, Freddy than and less retrograde. That is a great meme. Did you? See, I, obviously, you saw the meme. Um, I loved it. Whoever comes up with that stuff, you know, I don't know. They, um, it takes a lot of energy to do that, creative energy. Julie said, would you like uh, to read Nashi's Lights? Oh, oh, this is Stephanie. Stephanie is posting this. Okay. Thank you for posting that, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Cindy said, I subscribed earlier today. Cindy, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the magazine. And one of the things that we do here, Cindy, on this afternoon live stream is once a month, the third Monday or the third Tuesday, because sometimes I forget on a Monday, um, is that I have all of the back issues of Star Nation's magazine. I order a, a print copy. Um, every month because I go through the print copy and take a look at it and say, oh, that really turned out good or, you know, we have to redo that for the print version and, and that kind of thing, you know, just tweaks. Um, and so I have all of these back issues. So I'm gifting them to um, the audience um, that come and, you know, hang out with me in the afternoons. And so they're randomly picked. And uh, so you might actually win a, a, a past issue. You never know. You never know. All right. And Stephanie is saying, my face is still numb from the dentist, but it's all good. Well, good for you. Yay. That's good. There's nothing like uh, being in dental pain. I know. Last year. You know, <laughs> 2017 was a very interesting year for me. And uh, even with the dental stuff, it's like, no, 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 I can take care of this. We'll do this in the natural way. And we'll use herbs and we'll do, you know. <sighs> I've never, never had a root canal done, ever. And I never had a problem with a root of one of my teeth, never. And didn't know the symptoms or anything like that. And it, I mean, it was really painful. And finally, finally, I broke down and said, I'm going to the dentist. And they took a look at it. And in fact, I think I was going in for something completely different. Um, I don't even remember what that was. But anyway, they, they touched that one. It was like, you know. <laughs> and, and so anyway, we ended up, I ended up doing a root canal. And I tell you what, had I known how painless and easy that was, I would have done it, like, had done it months and months and months ago, right? So I understand, Stephanie. You know, when, once you get that relief from that pain, that dental pain, it's like, yeah, yeah, I can't believe I lived with it that long. And um, I think this is Julie saying this. You get <laughs> Julie and Stephanie, if you could put your name in uh, when you make the comments through uh, the, the main fan page, that would be really be helpful for me because I'm trying to figure out, you know, who is who's doing which comment. So that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, I think this is Julie. She's saying Christine Pollock did the artwork for Minnie Kansman's book. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Um, yeah. She is a, a really great artist, Christine is. Spiritually motivated, spiritually led. Um, and in fact, um, there is a very, very strong possibility that Christine is going to be teaching an art class through Star Nations Academy here um, next uh, late summer, early fall. Um, and she's thinking maybe we're going to be learning how to, how to use pastels. No drawing ability necessary, um, but to come and experience um, what it's like to work, work with really good uh, oil pastels. And, uh, and so she's, she's, getting, she's, she's cooking it, all right? She's, she's uh, thinking about it, and 
and uh, trying to figure out what her intention is going to be and that kind of thing. So I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> that is going to that's going to be like uh, end of August, beginning of July or um, September. Yeah, Cindy Ferris is here too. Just lost two teeth with an abscess in the last two months. Ouch! 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 Oh, owie. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. You know, I do, do. You guys have that book by um, um, Louise Hay? It's that small blue one, and um, it has you know the. Um, when there's the parts of our body that are are hurting or injured or something like that, and and she she tells us you know what um, spiritual effect does that have, and also the mantra or the affirmation to go with it to help heal it or to you know to, to help relieve it actually. So yeah, when she talks about the teeth, right? I gotta look at that. It's been a while since I've looked at it. It's a good a good reference book, and. Here we go. Tarot Journey by Julie Hedges. She jumped over to her fan page. <laughs> I'll post from my page. Yay. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. I'm glad you know how to do that because I, I couldn't figure that out when I first started doing this. How do I post when I'm, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. You ladies are so helpful. I appreciate it. All right. So today, today's card drop. Should probably let people know what cards we're using, huh? Because we got a couple of, a couple of new people. Um, right now, we're using this deck. Um, it's Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray, and the artwork is done by Lily Moses. Gorgeous, gorgeous cards. Um, I didn't I didn't know anything about Kyle Gray. Nothing. <laughs> uh, he's over in the UK. He lives in Glasgow, um, Scotland. Lily Moses lives in New Zealand, and uh, so UK people, right? Um, I was looking for a new deck of cards back in July, August, and um, feeling the the pull, feeling the need to to take a look at what cards are out there, and I wanted to find a deck that had more of a Native American, you know, emphasis to it. And there are some out there, but you know, technically, they're not all that good. <laughs> And so, and so I was looking to see if there was something new out there. And uh, I was on Amazon.com, scrolling through the divination cards um, research. And um, this deck literally jumped off the screen at me and is like, okay, we got to look at this one. And I like what Kyle had written about his, his vision and mission for the cards. And that is that he connects to ancient um, spiritual information and bringing it forward into modern day and how we can apply it today. And that is so really, really close to our mission and vision here at Star Nations, right? We're your bridge to spiritual, uh, ancient spiritual information and modern information, right? So, yeah, I took a look at it and uh, they were published this year in 2018 and released in September. So I had to pre-order order my deck, but I am so glad that I did. I really like this deck. Um, in fact, I like it so much that um, I'm going to work on um, trying to interview Lily Moses and try to also get uh, Kyle on with us too, uh, my weekly show. So we're going to try to see if we can get that done in, in 2019. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Here's Julie. Thank you, Julie. She says, teeth and bones are Capricorn. Saturn is now in Capricorn until 2020. Spiritually could be about your foundations. Need to be secure in your foundations. Oh, good info. Thank you, Julie. Um, she says, hey, house, uh, offering $7 deck, card decks and free shipping. Ends at midnight today. So if you guys, those of you who like to shop through Hay House, they got this great deal going on. Thanks for sharing that, Julie. <laughs> she says, I ordered a few lots. <laughs> I ordered a lot. I I believe you, Julie. I believe you. <laughs> uh, Julie, uh, Stephanie is saying, Julie Hedges, I, I don't have the links to Minnie's book yet. Okay. Um, I do. Let me think. Wait, hold it. Hold the phone, Joan. I, I'm working on the magazine, um, the December issue, and so I have some of the information 
that goes into the magazine um, documents up. Um, and so I can, I can find Minnie's book here, Missing Nana. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, um, I know what I'll do. Because sometimes my comments that I put into Be Live. Uh, doesn't they don't show up for some reason sometimes they do and sometimes they don't and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to messenger and I am going to get Stephanie up and I'm going to send it to uh, the Nana missing Nana book um, information over to Stephanie and Stephanie if you could if you could put it into the, the chat that would be fantastic fantastic there's short links, and so they're uh, a little bit easier to deal with. Yeah. Okay, Rob says, back to work. I'll catch the archives. Good. Thank you, Rob, for stopping by and saying hi and delivering some of that good wisdom, uh, sense of humor and wisdom that you carry, right? Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, so let's talk about the cards. That's why you guys are here, right? <laughs> the cards. It's warm in here. See, it's 32 degrees, <laughs> and I feel like it's spring. Okay, alrighty, so uh, the first card that came is this one. And this is a card that we all just really loved the first time we got her. It is She-Wolf, and it's Unleash the Wild Within. Unleash the Wild Within. She-Wolf. Look at that artwork. Isn't that fantastic? With the full moon in the back. Full illumination. And, you know, there's in a shamanic way, many times um, what the medicine people or holy people do is they, they take on the, the, the medicine, the aspects the, um, of their power animal, right? And there are some medicine people, some holy people who can actually um, shape shift into the actual animal. Okay. This particular card, um, she is just not wearing a headdress of, made out of a wolf. The wolf is her. She is the wolf. Yeah, it's shape-shifting. One in the same. I just love it. You know, and um, I know that she's got turkey feathers in there, but, you know, there's other feathers in there, too. The turkey feathers, you can always kind of tell because the turkey, they have a kind of a rounded bottom and they get that, um, the striping. But these feathers back here, those are not turkey feathers. They may be, may be hawk because they get that tip. They're, they're um, a sharp tip on it. It's not rounded. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly. If it were um, owl, they would have the rounded edge too. So I'm thinking that's probably more like a hawk feather maybe. Yeah. I love it. It's great artwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's find out a little bit about what Kyle has to say about She-Wolf. The last time we had drawn her, um, it was like um, the, the people in the chat just really, really loved that. And uh, loved her. She will unleash the wild within. The message is let your wild side up and out. Unleash your talents and your desires. And so when I reread this information this morning and I read that last sentence that unleash your talents and your desires. I sat with that for just a moment because I do really feel like sometimes we hold back. We hold back on our talents and our gifts. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of reasons, sometimes, sometimes we don't like to have the spotlight on us. You know, we don't like to be out there in front of all these people looking at us. <laughs> Some people don't like that, you know, and so what they do is they kind of, they kind of hang back, right? Um, they're, they're the quiet ones usually, you know, leaning up against the wall in the back of the room. Um, they're not the ones that are probably talking the loudest, right? But sometimes we we kind of hang back and we don't 
we don't put 100% of ourselves into our gifts or into our talents. And then sometimes, sometimes we kind of hang back and not uh, put 100% in because we're, um, we're trying to be maybe too kind or more kind to the person standing next to us and uh, not to outshine them. <laughs> right. So we kind of, we kind of dim our light so that, um, so that uh, they don't feel like they're um, being overshadowed or overpowered by us. And so we, we kind of hang back a little bit, right? I've done that. I've done that the first time. Um, I was in a class with Denise Lynn in California, and we were. It was about feng shui and space clearing, right? And I think it was the advanced course, if I remember right. And a good friend of mine. We got to be really good friends. Deborah Redfern. She's up in uh, British Columbia. We we we're partnered up, and uh, we had to have our floor plans of our house, and we had to read each other's floor plans. All right, energetically read them. So, and she was living at the time in an RV. Her and her husband uh, moved across Canada from Newfoundland all the way across to British Columbia. And they sold everything, um, purchased the RV, and they lived in the RV and traveled through the RV. I think it was like two years or something like that. And so <laughs> we're sitting on the floor, and she's reading my floor plan, and it was good information. And so it was my turn, and I remember sitting there, and I'm I'm talking to my spiritual team, and I said, "Okay, I'm quietly to myself. I'm thinking, okay, we're can we're gonna take the lid off. We're not going to filter things out because um, either, you know, might think I'm crazy, or um, that's too much, or you know, we're we're just going to give her everything that comes through." So fill me up. What's going on with, with her RV? And so I'm, I've got my hands on, on the drawing, right? And I flashed on the colors and I said, you know, it really feels good in there. And I said, but there's, I said, no, I'm not mechanically minded, but there is something not right with something underneath, underneath. And it looks like it's a moving part, but I'm not sure exactly what that goes to. And it's not broken, but it could be broken soon kind of thing, right? And so anyway, um, we finished that exercise and we went to dinner and, and uh, she went and contacted her husband and was talking to him about the reading and, you know, and it was all good information, you know, we'll keep an eye on whatever that is. And well, he was having problems with I think it was like two days later, having problems with the um, uh, the slide, you know, to extend a room, right? It slides out and it wouldn't, it would only slide out part of the way and it wouldn't go any further and he could get it to retract, but he couldn't get it to pull, pull all the way out. And so he ended up having to take it in and sure enough, there was a mechanical issue. <laughs> and I remember that was the very first time, very first time um, I actually worked with somebody without putting the filters in place without holding back, you know, and that was in, I don't know, 2002, maybe something like that. Um, and so sometimes I think that we, we don't go a hundred percent with our gifts for a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons, but I think it's more important that we, that we recognize it, that we at least notice it. Okay. Doesn't mean that you have to, fix it all in one day or say, okay, that's it. We're doing it a hundred percent. Sometimes we have to do some healing around some things in order to be able to do that. Right. Um, but I used to talk about parallel lives or past lives that, you know, maybe in a past life, maybe, you know, you were burned because of your gift using it, or um, maybe you were, you were hung because of it, right? And so you lost your, your, your physical life because of your gifts, using your gifts. I used to talk like that about that a lot. Um, but in this energy field, in this resonance that we live in right now, none of that makes any difference anymore. Because all of that old stuff, we've healed so much as a collective that 
I really believe that those uh, past lives or those parallel lives um, don't affect us as much as they did 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah, I think that we're living literally living in this new age where um, if we have a block or an interference, it has more to do with our, our emotional and mental traumas from this life rather than a past life. I don't know, how do you guys feel about that? Um, that was an impression that I got, oh gosh, earlier this year, earlier this year, because um, um, even if even if we have attachments, you know, entity attachments or something like that, that has more to do with, with what's going on right now in this lifetime. Now we may have ancestral stuff that we have to heal. You know, that that isn't necessarily a past life necessarily, but it, it, we do have ancestral lineage stuff that we're healing. And that is like a domino effect. When we heal one aspect for ourselves in this lifetime, in the present time, that those dominoes go in both directions, you know, helping our, our ancestors and our descendants too. So um, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, you guys are so good at that book stuff. They're listing uh, both Julie and uh, um, Steph are, Stephanie are, are helping get the, the information out about the, the publishing end of Star Nation. It's the two books that we have published, both for um, Julie Hedges and um, Minnie Kansman. The Tarot Journey by Julie Hedges and Minnie Kansman's book, Missing Nana. Yeah. Yeah. Julie says, would be worth exploring. Interesting you say that about past lives versus current issues. I, yeah, yeah. Um, and some of it is from personal experience, but it's also by being witnessing, a witness to other people's healings that it has, it had many, many of those had more to do with the current, the current life than a past life. Um, yeah. So anyway, when we when we have those interferences of those traumas that are that are unhealed, um, they tend to really kind of muck up <laughs> the use of our gifts, you know. And um, and so when we have a sentence like like the unleash your talents and your desires, um, we may want to unleash them, but we have this this interference that we can only go so far with them. And then we have to, um, we have to do something else in order to, to reach them at hundred percent. Right. Yeah. She wolf. Um, Kyle goes on to say that the she, she wolf is a very powerful shamanic soul who is half wolf and half woman. She is the alpha female who is not afraid to stand out from the crowd or in this, in this case, the pack. She is wild, unfiltered, and unfettered. I like that. Yeah, a lot of uns. <laughs> she is wild, unfiltered, and unfettered. Yeah. Christine saying, yes, more in this, in this life issues. I, I agree. I really do. Um, and they can be pretty, pretty powerful healings um, when we're dealing with the current life, you know, situations. Yeah. Um, she's, uh, Kyle goes on to say, she encourages you not to be trapped by the limiting factors of weaker members of the pack or those who are trying to hunt you down because you have gifts they don't like or understand. She represents the energy of the wildness and the unknown and encourages you to be free and unchained and go beyond boundaries. Release the animal energy within and track down what you need to do to express your true self. Yeah. So, you know, to me, it's kind of like um, when we've identified a situation that could, we could use some healing around, um, Many times what we're dealing with is the, su the, the surface, right, um, symptoms. But if we look deeper, we understand it more, number one. And number two, we can heal at a, uh, at a deeper rate, 
right? And so for me, for me, I'm like constantly asking my my team, my spiritual team, show me what's at the root of this. I really want to understand this at the root. Show me where it started. And how can we heal it as gracefully as we possibly can and as completely? Yeah, as completely. <laughs> George is asleep underneath my chair and he was, he had his little puppy, puppy head <laughs> on my foot. Yeah, I had to move my leg. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and so trying to really make the intention consciously to go to the, to the root. Um, because when we do that, um, it, the healing is, is much deeper and broader. And so all of those other axillary situations um, that need healing, those might get healed automatically just because you went to the root of that one problem, that one issue. Yeah. Um, he also says that you're being re, I like this word, because I'm not sure if it's a real word, rewilded, R-E-W-I-L-D-E-D. -E rewilded at this time guided to reconnect with your rebellious heart the part of you that likes to break boundaries and go beyond them completely okay so you know it takes courage to do that right it it's got to kind of almost be in your personality to 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 take that leap and if you're if you're not if that's not a part of your personality you know, you can still do the leap. You just have to get support to do it, right? Because a couple of my sisters have been in the chat rooms. And I don't know. Christine is here for sure. I thought I saw somebody else in the chat too. Um, but, you know, your inner circle, those that you really trust, and tell them, share with them, you know, what what your your mission is, what you're, what you're going to be doing. And uh, ask them to, to support you, whether it's, you know, the physical support or energetic support, you know, the prayers. Yeah, we do that all the time for each other. My sisters, sisters and I, we do that all the time. Um, giving each other that kind of support and that nudge. And also, you know, and when we talk about breaking boundaries, some people, it gets kind of nervous, you know, because boundaries, healthy boundaries are really good. And I think we learned something new recently about boundaries by talking about it during these live streams is that healthy boundaries means that they're set from love and not fear. Boundaries set through fear take a lot of energy, a lot of energy to hold in place. Yeah. And I think that we learned that that concept through um, our chats here. Um, and so when you look at your boundaries is to, 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 to actually evaluate them. Did I set that boundary because uh, from a loving place or did I set it from a place of fear? And if it was, if you set it from fear is to take it down, delete it and um, redo it, set a new boundary that's based in love rather than fear. Yeah. It's going to be so much stronger and you don't have to have a lot of energy going to it to keep it up. In other words, there won't be a lot of people uh, or situations testing it and trying to blow past it. Right. Um, and um, when it's set with love, you know, it's so much stronger. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Julie, is, Julie, and I mean Julie, Stephanie wrote in here, rewilding of humanity um, with, uh, gave us a Wikipedia anachronism. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that's another word, huh? Anachronism. I think a lot of us would probably kind of somewhat fit that description. Um, and Christine is saying, I forget I can show these. Yeah. There you go. And Christine is very thankful for, for, for the sisters. Me too. Me too. Um, and so when we're testing those boundaries, sometimes, actually, you know what this kind of reminded me of? For those people who really love to cook or, or bake, 
who really love to cook and bake. And they're, they're in there and they, they have this recipe that they got from somebody or somewhere. And what they start doing is, is um, tweaking it and saying, oh, I think it'd really be good if we had added this or if we didn't have as much of that. And they're very brave <laughs> in creating something different by using a recipe, but tweaking it. And, and uh, they're very brave in being able to do that. Me? Not so much. Um, I, I follow the recipe because I, my talents do not lie in cooking and baking. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I follow the recipe. That way I know it turns out and everybody's happy and uh, um, really liking the meal. Um, if I were left on my own to, to do that kind of tweaking, I don't know if it would really turn out that well. Because you know what? You, ha you have to pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> I can't talk and cook at the same time. I can't because I lose my place. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to really be focused on it. Cindy said, my mother did it every time. I know. So did my mom. You know, you ask them about how how'd you make that or what's the recipe for that? And they look at you like, there's no recipe. If you take a pinch of this and a little bit of that and there's not even any measurements. You know, and, and it turns out, and it turns out, and it's delicious. There's some people who really are good at that. Yeah. And so he's saying she would make us guess what it was. <laughs> you mean guess the, the, the spice or whatever she used? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so breaking through boundaries is, to me, that's a good, uh, the baking or the cooking is a good metaphor. Because there's some people who do that really easily and very gracefully, and it and it's delicious. And then there's those of us with certain boundaries. We I follow the recipe, but put me in to make a drum, and um, and I, you know, sometimes I have to do things a little bit differently because I'm guided by spirit to do it differently. So, so you know, we all have the opportunity and the ability to go past those boundaries um, and I'm going to put in a healthy way. That's a caveat in a healthy way. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. So um, he says that if you've been holding back on your hopes and dreams, you're being encouraged to chase after them. Now let the wolf energy within help you track down what direction you want to go in. And don't let a, let any traps or hunters get in the way of your freedom or your growth. The life you want is here. The life you want is here. Yeah. So the she-wolf, right? The she-wolf. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, the, the, not the gender, but the, the energy, the female energy is very nurturing too. You know, it doesn't mean that we're uh, weak or um, hmm, that we're pushovers or anything like that. It's just that we come from a perspective or a place that is strong but gentle, right? Strong but gentle. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so some, something keeps keeps crossing my mind, and I, so I'm just gonna have to say it out loud, okay? Because it keeps keeps repeating, and it's one of my one of my teams. They want me to say this out loud. So um, we do have a community member of Star Nations. Her name is Rochelle Rochelle Wadi. She um, is a longtime listener and uh, supporter of Star Nations. Rochelle had surgery yesterday on her shoulder. I think it was her left shoulder. Um, and the surgery went well. Uh, you may have seen some of the postings in Facebook. I did speak to Rochelle earlier today. Um, she is in quite a bit of pain. Um, and um, I'm on her behalf, on her behalf, um, is to say some prayers for Rochelle and to help her um, get through that this painful piece. Um, yeah. It's all about the healing part, you know, and she's going to have quite a bit of uh, physical therapy to have to go through as well. And we all know that that physical therapy can, can be painful. Um, 
And so I think that if we all just said a prayer for her and held her um, close to our hearts to to help her get through this 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 part of her journey. Yeah. And I know, I know that she already asked for prayers. I think, didn't she, um, Julie Hedges, through uh, the spirituality uh, close our secret group? I think she did. Um, but uh, since she's a part of Star Nation's community, um, I thought I would let you guys know. And I'm sure she would really appreciate um, the extra prayers. Yeah. A little Reiki sent her way. It would be nice. Yeah, Julie, Julie is saying, yes, prayers for Rochelle. She's in the energy healing prayer group. Yeah. Yeah, when I talked to her this morning, um, she was in quite a bit of pain. Um, and the, the um, medical staff at the hospital were going to be bringing in some heavy duty uh, pain relievers. And so, um, yeah, they probably put her to sleep, I would imagine. <laughs> they would me anyway. Um, and so I thought I'd say it out loud because it, it kept coming back around. So I'm, I'm mentioning it, it out loud. Thank you to my team for bringing that forward. And um, yeah, I'm just sending some love toward uh, Rochelle. There we go. Okay, so the next card. Hmm. This is the next card, Mirror Guardian. Now, the Mirror Guardian actually showed up yesterday, too. But we only had time to cover the, the first card. And that was uh, Guardian of Magic, I think it was. Um, and so this is she, <laughs> the Mirror Guardian's making her second attempt um, to get in front of us to support the first card, She-Wolf. And the mirror, the mirror Guardian, you can see that she's looking into the mirror and looking, um, that's the Milky Way that she's seeing. Yeah. It says, take time to reflect. Take time to reflect. So we get the first card that's telling us to unleash our wild within, to go after um, our, our desires, and to also... Um, to use our gifts and our talents 100%, you know, to really use them, right? And the second card is, is about reflection. And the thing is, is that with the reflection card, when you're looking into a mirror, and, you know, we've said this quite often, actually, is that um, sometimes we, when we're having um, a situation, maybe the, the, the other person is reflecting something to us, right? So we have to take a look at it. But the other piece is that um, we create the world around us, what we see and what we experience. And so um, what is going on in, th in the inside is created on the outside. And so we get to see that reflection of what our life on the inside is when we're looking at our outer world. And so if your outer world um, doesn't match or you feel it doesn't match what what you want inside, then the time how to change it is to change what's going on inside. It's an inside job, right? It's an inside job. Yeah. All right. And Julie is also saying, if any uh, Star Nations people want to be in the group, it's a secret group, so people can feel safe. Just friend Julie, and she can um, add you to the group if you like. It really is a really nice group. Um, um, I'm a part of it. <laughs> and so when there's a request, a prayer request that goes out, uh, Julie and Rob make sure that we um, are notified and so that we can we can add our prayers to, to the groups as well. Stephanie says, great time to reflect in the last year and pull out a journal and see what we did well and what we can do better next time. Exactly, exactly. And you know, we're, yeah, you're right. We're heading into that time of the year um, we're collectively and um, the mass populations too, you know, is that um, where when the new year is coming up and we take a look at how, how did 2018 go? What were some of the highlights? What were the good things that happened, right? Um, and then what, what were some of the things that we could have done better or tweaked or geez, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I would have changed that. <laughs> 
you know, um, something, you know, to, to be able to um, reflect, do that reflection. And even if you didn't do New Year's resolutions or anything like that kind of stuff, um, even if you live your life by the medicine wheel, yeah, we're heading into that time where um, we're in the deep winter and that is the time about going within, going within and um, doing, I don't want to call it an assessment or an evaluation, but it really is to take stock, take stock of the past year. And what do you want to bring into the new year, into the next, the next go round of the wheel, right? Planting those seeds and those seeds are our thoughts, our thoughts and our desires, the head and the heart coming together to create something that you want in, in, in the coming year. Right. So good one, just Steph. Thank you for, for sharing that. And it's always good to take out a journal to do that. How many people actually longhand write or print their journal? The reason why I ask is I spend so much time in front of this, <laughs> my laptop, and doing a lot of writing uh, with the keyboard or with my iPad. Um, there are some things that I still longhand. Um, my my uh, dream journal. I don't I don't uh, write every dream. I don't write every dream, but specific dreams, dreams that are. Um, more prophetic or um, they definitely have a message going on, right? Yeah. Those are the ones I journal. I used to journal all of them years and years and years ago. I used to do that um, and got really good at dream interpretation because of it. Um, but these days, really, it's only it's only those those dreams that are. Yeah, that kind of stick with you, right? Those are the ones that aren't really dreams. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Daring to live life fully. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Good. Thank you, Stephanie. She says, I fell four to six journals a year in slow years. Oh, yeah. So do you, so you're you're actually handwriting, handwriting these. You know, and then there's some people, I love watching this. There's a good friend of mine. She not only handwrites the journals, but she also does drawings in them sketches yeah and you can always tell when when it's something that's pretty significant for her she's actually from i can't remember the name of the town in poland i met her through drunvalo melchizedek's work and we are training um to be one of his teachers and uh and so you know we were having lunch and she was asking me a thousand questions about native americans and I told her that I that I'd seen her writing and drawing um, during class. She says, "Oh, that's how I take notes. That's how I journal too." And so she kind of flipped through some of her personal journal and was showing me um, that she how she writes um, and then what she does. And she goes, "When I can't, when the words don't come," she says, "That's when I start to draw. I draw." And she always has colored pencils with her. <laughs> always. Yeah. So she's always doing that. Mm -hmm. Julie Hedges is saying, love art journaling. Yeah. And she says, I semi sort of do that. <laughs> and the Stephanie says, yep, by hand, longhand, my manuscripts too. Yeah. There is something about the tactileness of it, you know, the, the pen and the paper even the quality of the paper. Um, there, there, there is something about that, the feeling of it. But there's also the the mind-body connection to it as well. Um, when we're actually handwriting something, it, it actually gets into our long-term memory. Yeah. Whereas if we're typing it on the keyboard, not, not necessarily will it end up in your long-term memory. Isn't that fascinating? Hmm? All right, so these two cards for today. Um, the Mirror Guardian. 
Yeah, let's see if we can find her. Here she is. The message is, take some time to reflect on your strengths and challenges and how far you've come to recognize your gifts. So it's really all about our gifts again. We're on a theme. <laughs> this whole week, we're on a theme. It says the mirror represents the fact that your core beliefs and ideas are in fact what is reflected back to you by your world. Your life is one big mirror of how you feel within and the mirror guardian helps you to recognize that. When this card appears, you're being invited to take some time to see where you are right now. Not where you were last year or five years ago um, or necessarily where you want to go in the next two or three years, but, but right now, in your present moment right now. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. You are, you are a beautiful being who has surmounted so many challenges and expanded in so many ways. Your angels are now guiding you to take inventory of your life, to take the time to note all of your recent experiences, the challenges you have surmounted, um, the strengths you have developed, and the lessons you have learned. Your angels want you to reflect on your strengths, in particular those aspects of yourself that you feel have not been acknowledged by others so that you can you can actually acknowledge it yourself, right? Yeah. I like this this reading today because it's about our gifts again and it's about how we access them and how we use them. And the first card was all about being in it 100%, using your gifts to the not just to the best of your ability, but the po potential, the the potency of it, right? Not to go in half-hearted, but to go in with your full heart. And in order to do that, sometimes we have to do some healing work in order to do that. And the mirror is really, you know, if we, let's, let's just take a second here, you know, whatever your gifts are, whatever you came in with, that you do well no matter what, right? You, it's like you have to really try to dampen it, <laughs> to, to shut it down. It takes a lot of effort to do that. But if you had taken the lid off, take the cover off of it, no filters, you, you have full access, full access, what would your life be like? Imagine that. Last year, at the winter solstice, and I think I shared this with you guys, is that um, Paul and I, we did our, our fire ceremony, you know, and we, we talked about uh, the things that had happened in 2017 and things that, you know, that we're, we were grateful for and things that we're more than happy to release. Um, and then we started talking about what the things that we wanted to do in 2018. And there was one of the things that I said is that um, I, I want to experience as gracefully as I possibly can the use of my gifts at 100% to build a foundation to support all of that so that I have that experience, that my intention is to be able to do that in this lifetime so that when it's my time, my turn to walk on, I can say, look what I did. I used them 100%. And how much fun was that, right? That's what that was my intention. And I have to say, 2018 has been pretty darn good. I've met some fantastic people and um, developing um, a better foundation, a stronger foundation for Star Nations. Um, George came into our lives. You know, Paul just got offered a new position at his job. Um, yeah, and we've got some good things going on, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing a heck of a lot more than I ever did, that's for sure. Um, Julie is saying, my Shining Year 2019 workbook by Lonnie Dawson. I just bought one for next year. Oh, good for you. And Cindy's saying, I noticed that you're rocking yourself today. I am. You know why? <laughs> um, actually, 
I actually do that probably a little bit more subtly because I'm a triple fire and Julie, Julie actually says I'm quadruple. And so I have a lot of energy, a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. And a lot of times I am um, bouncing a leg usually, you know, it's a lot more subtle. I've learned, had to learn how to do that actually. <laughs> I had to actually learn how to do that. Um, I'm one of those people that, that um, needs to stand up when I'm in a, in like in a conference or a class or something like that, I will, um, I will need to stand up and kind of walk around in the back of the room or, or lean up against the wall and not so much <laughs> in a seated position because I get excited about certain things. And it's like, and I'm, if you were sitting behind me, you'd want to put your hands on my shoulders and say, please sit down. <laughs> so that's why I usually try to sit in the back as much as I can so that I'm not you know, bouncing around in front of somebody else. But yes, and the reason why I'm I'm rocking today is because I have Star Nations magazine where I'm at I'm at a certain point with the preparing the articles and the pictures, taking the raw material and getting it um into the um the template that we have for the layout to actually happen. And I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> and so in the back of my mind, Cindy, in the back of my mind, what I'm what I'm thinking is, okay, I still gotta find a poem. I still have to find a poem. I'll find a poem and a picture. But that's what the rocking is about, is because it's self self soothing. <laughs> Putting me, keeping me here in the time frame with you because I enjoy our time together. And I want to be really present with this. And so that's what some of the rocking is about, is that it helps me to um, let the energy dissipate. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. The energy to, to dissipate. Yeah. <laughs> do you do anything like that, Cindy? Because uh, I know that there's, um, I have one brother that literally, um, well, I mean, this when you're watch, sitting with him, I don't know if I can do it. He's doing one of these things, and I don't know if you can even see it, but he's us usually bouncing his leg. This is my older brother. And um, sometimes it's like, well, you stop it. You're shaking the table. <laughs> and Paul Paul is, uh, is a Gemini, and he's constantly moving. He's got it. I call, used to call him Squirrel, um, but he's constantly moving. Yeah. It helps when I do meditations and I haven't been able to find the time to meditate in the last three days. So yeah, someone's, it's, it's gotta go somewhere. It's gotta go somewhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And then Cindy, Cindy is saying any significant that both cards are feminine. Um, <clears throat> I think so because sometimes we get uh, two masculine cards and sometimes um, when we get three cards, sometimes it's, you know, the balance of the two, but I do believe that there's some significance here because we're talking about use the use of our gifts. And when we use our gifts, many times it's because we're we're in the creative mode, right? We're we're creating something. Um, and so yeah, I do believe that this, there is some significance to them being both female. You know, and look at the the difference between the tw between their energies too. You know, you got the wolf that is um, it's about letting out the wild side. <laughs> and then when you're when you're ref doing reflective work, looking in the mirror, doing that reflection work, you're usually much more quieter. I'm not going to say calmer, but quieter because your 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 focus and your in intention is is on the mirror, right? Yeah. <laughs> Christine, yay, Nashi. Well, thank you, Christine. Cindy says, or Julie says, you're using your gifts at 100%. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, Cindy's saying, LOL, Dad would say the same thing to me. Uh, okay. Say which thing to you, Cindy? When she was young. Yeah. So we're at the top of the hour. I want to thank you guys for being with me today and sharing about are the cards that we got today. And really, it's about our gifts, isn't it? If we're on a theme this whole week, 
about using our gifts, doing what we have to do to have access to them without interference, without the debris that, that might cover them up, doing our healing work. Um, yeah. So whatever was shared today, if it resonated with you, my suggestion, pick it up, hold it, embrace it. Notice how the energy falls, unfolds for you and flows for you today. Um, and whether you're a direct participant in that or a witness, because, you know, either way we're learning. Um, but it's good to notice that. And if it didn't resonate with you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just let it lie. It wasn't for you. Um, no feelings hurt. Nothing, nothing like that at all. No worries. Okay. Uh, maybe you might know somebody who would enjoy the conversation or the information. You can always just share the link with them and then you're done. Right. Um, and so we're getting prepared for um, the shows this coming week. Um, I'll have more information about that for you tomorrow. Um, right now, I am all about the magazine. <laughs> and uh, the, I think you guys are going to like the December issue. It's really shaping up to be one of um, the solstice, Christmas, um, the darkness of the year, in other words, the length of, of, of uh, sunlight. Yeah, I think you guys are going to like it. So with that, enjoy the rest of your Friday. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern to Central for the Daily Card Draw. Yeah. All right. Bama Mina. That's Padawatami for until we see each other again. Love you guys.